guys, AJ from Fork and Hose Company here on National Fire Radio. Today, I've got a very special guest. I've got my paisan, Alex Caligari. What's going on, AJ? Thank you for coming on, Alex. Um, you've been submitting meals and recipes to Fork and Hose Company for a couple of years now, at least. Absolutely. Um, and everything that you put out is, is phenomenal. Um, Thank you. I, I know you used to, your, your handle was the fireman chef. No, uh, the firefighter foodie for a while. Firefighter foodie, right, right. I'm yeah. sorry, I apologize. It's okay, um, fireman chef is out of California. Yeah, 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 but you change it now, it's at Alex Caligari yeah. underscore, I think, right? Right, yes. All right, and where are you from, Alex? Give, give the viewers uh, a little rundown on yourself. A quick rundown is my family immigrated from Italy. Uh, I got here when I was five uh, to Miami, where I grew up, and uh, like, you know, typical Italians, what do we do? We open up a restaurant. Wow. And so I grew up in the uh, child, uh, uh, no labor laws, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, grew up working in the kitchen from when I was a little kid, man, you know, washing pots and pans. And this was an so Italian food. restaurant? It was. Wow, that's awesome. It was, but it was a small, you know, it wasn't nothing fancy, you know. It doesn't have to be. It was a red sauce restaurant. And, nice. Uh, you know, at 18, I remember just being like, I hate this place. I hate cooking. Right. I hate the restaurant business. You know, I told my dad, I was the youngest of four. I'm like, I'm leaving. I will never cook again, you know. And he was like, I can't believe, you know, I want to do yeah. a restaurant. And I'm like, no, nah, it's a curse, you know. And, and now look at you. <laughs> and now look at me, yeah, so. You're making like a second career out of cooking, basically, right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm having yeah. fun with it, and it's right, been right, like right. an interesting ride for me. And how long you've been on the job? Uh, 15 years. 15 years, and you're with Boca Raton Fire, correct? Correct, yeah. That's I can't correct. help but tell you, every time I hear Boca Raton, I don't know if you watch Seinfeld, but I hear Del Boca Vista. Yes. I don't even think I don't know if that was in Boca Raton or if that was like a play on you know words or whatever, but I hear Boca Raton and I think of all of the Del Boca Vista episodes. Yes, that that is a, I think it's pretty much spot on. You pretty know, accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's grown a little bit since then. Right. Uh, you know. And is it a big job or is it you know a small job? Uh, you mean for department? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a uh, virgin. Margarita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a non-virgin beer. Local. local exactly. Semi-local. We're doing a Latin food uh, theme, so I want the virgin margarita. See, that's, uh, so we that's, have that's the true chef right there. You're thinking ahead of the game. You know, you're thinking <laughs> you pair with your food. I like it. I like it. All right. So speaking of Latin food, uh -huh. why don't you tell everybody what, what you're making tonight, and then I'll give you okay. what you do. Great. Well, one of the one of the benefits of growing up in Miami is that you know we were surrounded and we're immersed by so many different cultures, There's so different you know cuisines from the the Caribbean, South America, Latin America, and it's just you know I mean even though my background is Italian, you uh, you just can't help to walk into these markets and pick up some of these spices and these different uh, products and foods and cook with it. And throughout the years. I've embraced some of the cooking, and uh, for so for tonight, I kind of wanted to uh, have a have a little fun with the uh, local produce that I'm uh, accessible to me. So I wanted to do a uh, a pork butt in the pressure cooker. I had the power quick pot, uh, which I use at the firehouse all the time. It's a it's such an easy recipe, and it feeds the guys, it feeds a lot of people. It's cheap, it's fast. Uh, so I wanted to do something with that to kind of give people and other firemen uh, ideas of something that's good in the firehouse. You just literally stick it in, you set it, you forget it. You go run calls, whatever you want, you're not going to burn it. And when you come like back, a crock pot on steroids, basically. You know, you're going to take something that you could cook in the crock pot, but you're going to do it in, you know, half the time. Maybe sure. even quicker. Right. Yes. And the Power Quick Pot's been good. They were they donated a pot to uh, our buddy as a Pelham. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 
Yeah, they were kind enough to to send him a, a big old pressure cooker to his home. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh, that was a couple years ago. That was awesome. We, and yeah, yeah. So they're good. We appreciated yeah, the local guys around here, here, and uh, you know that was a nice nice gesture for sure. And then so you got pork in that. And what else? That over a tostón, and a tostón is basically a, a plantain. Uh, normally it's green, and when you cut it, you mash it into a coin, and then you fry it. Uh, and then I'm going to top that with a little bit of uh, crema fresca, which is uh, South American sour cream, basically. It's a little different. It's uh, a little more creamy. It's been fermented a little bit longer, so it has a different uh, flavor profile. I like it better. Uh, it's just it's a little more rich in flavor. Is it di is it different from like Mexican crema? Is it? It's um, very similar. It's very similar. similar. Yeah, this is from this is the Central Americano. So basically, it's like you know, encompasses. Right, it encompasses. They're very similar. Um, so in 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 that, I also have a. Uh, I'm going to say this wrong. Cotijo uh, cheese. <laughs> I'm getting a dirty look over here because she's Mexican. He's looking at the food style as like my. Yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. Mom. And this is a crumbled, a uh, very hard, sharp cheese that I'm going to put on top of the Mexican street corn I plan on making. I think you could probably compare that almost to like the Mexican version of uh, like Parmigiano for. Oh, exactly. For and when I can't find it, I use Parmesan cheese. Right, right. It's a good substitute if if you can't find the tea. Absolutely, 100%. Because it is hard to find, you know. I, I'm lucky, like, where I'm in, you know, I'm in New York, but I'm not in New York City, you know, 20 minutes outside of it. And in my area, we have a, a very big Latin community. So when you told me your menu, I was like, I know exactly what supermarket I'm going to. I know... They'll definitely have every single thing I need. Um, so we're both lucky in, in that way, but it's good to know that there's ways you can substitute certain things if, you know, you, you can't get those. Yeah, I can't get everything in Boca Raton. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So there's, there's some Parmesan cheese sprinkled in there with some Mexican street corn every once in a while. Yeah. And going back to, like, you know, the, the Italian thing and, and the Latin thing, like, if you think about it, Italian cooking, a lot of it's using what's available, right? Like what's in season. So you're, you're, you're using that same mindset, but you're just using what you have available, you know, being down in Florida. Absolutely. And the same is very rustic too. Like, uh, you know, Italian cuisine tends to be very, very rustic, uh, right. very regional too. Yeah. And this is the same concept. Use what's in season, what's regional. Um, and it's, it's food from the home. It's yeah. not. It's not fancy per se, you know. Especially Latin cuisine. It's not five star restaurant stuff. We could, you could, you know, you could obviously elevate it, and we're going to probably sure. a little bit tonight. Uh, but most of the time, it's just found in your in your homes, everyday home. Awesome. I, I see you're cooking your corn. I've got my corn behind me. Okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right on the stove top. I don't okay. know if you do that often. Um, I just like to set like a wire rack down. And I'll do – so I'm making, like, a, a charred salsa tonight. And I get everything on the stovetop. I'm not going to go fire up the grill for, you know, little things. So I like to do everything right on top of the stovetop. Um, okay. So if I turn my back to you, it's just because I don't want to burn. No, no, it's fine. And normally I, I make the, uh, the, the street corn. What I do is I, I soak the husk in water. Yep. And I put them right on the grill. Right, right, right. I kind of uh, just steam them on directly on the grill. Uh, and then I'll pull the husk back yep. and give it a nice start. I think, I think, honestly, it's easier to peel that way, too. You know, you're not fighting with the husk when you, when you try to do that raw. I feel like when you put it on the grill already with the husk on, when it's done, it's just a lot easier to get that off. Um, it gives a nice smoky flavor, too. Right. Uh, you know, you, it, it slightly charged the, that husk, so it's kind of like smoked. It's, yep. it, it gives it that nice uh, you know, aroma to it as well. It's almost like when you, if you were like cooking it right in the embers or something like that. Right. All right, mine's looking pretty good. I'm actually going to crank the heat up a little bit. Well, AJ, give me one second. We're going to, we're getting, uh, we're going to just, she's going to pause the, she's getting the phones. No problem. Yeah, she's going to mute her phone. Sorry. No, it's my computer. It's oh, going computer. crazy. A lot of angels are getting wings in heaven. <laughs> okay. 
is so annoying. Once that's squared away, we'll roll okay. back into it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got distracted. And you asked me like what I was gonna make and I got way sidetracked. Do you want me to come? Oh, it's all good, dude. Yeah. Okay, all good. All right. Okay, whenever you're ready. All right, let's do it. Yeah. All right, so my corn sounds like I got like the Wild West going over here right now. I don't know if you can hear the popping. Yeah, you're making popcorn back there, bud. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And then I'm actually, so, you know, with this show, what I like to do, and, and you know, I talked to you about it uh, on the phone call, I like to kind of put the ball in your court and then take what you're making and kind of put my own little spin on it. So um, you're, you're doing the pork to stone, right? Yes. You've got uh, sour orange skirt steak tacos with chimichurri. Correct. And you're doing elote, street corn. Correct. So I basically took everything you're making and I'm putting it into one dish. Really? So I'm going to do an elote bowl. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook the corn like we are doing right now, but I'm going to cut it off the cob. Delish. This, dude, I served this in the firehouse uh, with this old crew that I used to work with. And it was like every, especially in the summer, every week, you know, make, can you make that, yo, make that salad, make that corn salad. It's just, everybody likes to eat it on the cob, but it, because it's so easy to just shovel it in your mouth, I think that's the main appeal of it. Uh, so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to top it. I, I, I got a skirt steak, but instead of sour orange, because you really you can't, can't find it up there. <laughs> uh, I just did a cilantro lime. And actually, I like soy sauce in my marriage. Okay. So I put a little bit of that. And then I remember you had said something about frozen tostones. And I've never, I've never seen them because I never looked for them. So I yeah. went to the supermarket and I was like, they got to have it. And sure enough, right in the frozen food section, they had it. So I, I did a crumble. Um, I cooked them down and then I, I chopped them up. And then I mixed in some chorizo. So that's my, my pork oh. aspect. So that's just going to add like texture onto mine. Um, but I, I love what you're doing. I don't want to hold you up. Cook what you got to cook. No, uh, yeah, it sounds delicious. I, you know, the first thing I, I wanted to do was just get the pork in the pressure cooker and let it do its thing, if you don't mind. Do it. Yeah, all right. So uh, right over here, I have the, the Tyro Quick Pot, which is my firehouse favorite. And I don't know if you can see this. And I got about five pounds of uh, pork butt that I cubed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in, and I have some jarred salsa verde sauce, all right? You could use any substitute you want, any kind of sauce will work, but this is just one that I like to, to use, okay. and I'm going to add about a, about a half a jar. You don't need very much liquid in there because it's a pressure cooker, so it adds liquid as it cooks. All right, and we're going to just close this up, and we're going to set it to pork. And it's got a button on there just for pork. Correct. Wow. If you can see that, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's so easy, man. And it, literally, I just put it in there and closed it, added those I had two ingredients. And I, it was just cubed pork butt, salsa verde, and I set it for 30 minutes in the pressure cooker. And it's cheap, right? You're, you know, you're using oh. pork butt. That's not an expensive cut. No. Everybody knows in the fire, and I, I think I could talk about this every episode we do, you know, there's always some so sort of budget, right? Like, you know, there's firehouses that are like, all right, 10 bucks a guy, breakfast, lunch. Yeah, yeah I don't go for that. <laughs> I'm with you, bro. I'm right no, there. I'm cooking, you're paying. And if you don't like it, you can cook. I'm right there with you. And... You know, I'm lucky enough in my firehouse where the guys trust me enough that I'm not going to go buy truffles and like, you know, charge them 30 bucks for a plate of pasta. You know, it's, right. it's kind of like um, an honor system. Absolutely. I know there's jobs out there. Like the last episode we did with uh, Ben McGraw, who's from Texas, he gets 10 bucks a guy and that covers basically lunch and dinner, and it includes staple pantry items like ketchup, flour, oil. Really? And I'm like, man, for breakfast, I mean, for lunch and dinner in New York, you're not, you're not, it's not working. It, you know, 
he has, you know, quite a few guys in his station to cook for. So he, he you know, he kind of lucks out with being able to buy maybe like the family pack and the bulk stuff. Um, you know, I, I'm not that lucky. I don't have that many guys. So, you know, we're, we're constantly looking for the sales or the cheaper cuts like you're doing, like with the pork butt. Yeah, I always look for sales too. I, I, normally when I build my menu every every morning when I get on shift, is I, I seem to be the, the cook, is the first thing I do is I go right to the, you know, what's the, what's on sale at the local markets. Right, uh, right, right. I'll start with my protein uh, and then I'll build the menu from there. You know, right. I do try to, I, I try to keep it to $20 a meal. Okay. Try to, you know, but sometimes the guys are like, hey, let's have some good steak or let's, let's sure. just go up a little bit. But if I go over, I, I, I've never had anybody complain. You Especially know? if you're putting out good food. I mean, honestly, if, yeah. if you're going to get takeout, you could spend easily 15 to 20 bucks on a takeout meal. So, yeah. To get a nice home cooked meal that you'll probably get seconds on, because you know if you don't make enough, there's <laughs> seconds. You know, you know when there's like that. You can always go enough, over. You yeah. Just go under. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That that's like the rule of thumb, you know, with firehouse cooking. You know, you can always have more, and then there's a, you know, of course, there's always the art of firehouse sport eating. You know, where it means right. you're gonna eat, uh, you know, with like uh, twice your body weight. You know, it's like a food competition. No matter how much food's there, we're going to eat it as fast as possible. You know? And there's that, that you know, that uh, golden rule. It's, you know, don't eat as much or only eat as much that could fit in your mask. You know, <laughs> you got to let it all back out. But we break that rule all the time. Oh, yeah. I think that was just, a, you know, a way to make it seem like you're, you know, you're not a slob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, but we 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 eat well, man, in my station, and uh, I'm thankful. I have some good local markets with some good stuff that's sourced. Uh, what I did was I took some the Mexican street the, the corn. I'm sorry, it's okay. Cleaned it first, and just for the sake of uh, the podcast, I took the husk off. Sometimes I might leave it on there just for uh, the appearance. Right. And I put it on my griddle top here to give it a nice little char, and I think it gives it a little bit of flavor, almost like that popcorn type of flavor. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there. The char yeah, 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 nice. And so um, what I did was I got the, uh, the crema uh, centroamericana and a little bit of mayonnaise. This is the traditional uh, Mexican street corn. They call it lotus. And my spin on it, is and I don't know if it's an original spin or just something that I like to do. Is I took flaming hot uh, Cheetos, you know, what do you call those things? Uh, uh yeah. tacos. and I put them through the mill and it comes out uh, different flavors, you know. So you have like different chiles, and it's crunchy. I'm stealing this by the way. I'm, I'm sorry, stealing, I'm stealing this idea by the way. Oh, it's amazing. It's delicious. And since I went to a market that's in a special urban area, you get to find special colored Takis that you don't get what? at Puerto Rico. Like, all green. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that Miami Dolphin green? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I, didn't find, I, I couldn't find any of these green Takis in Boca for some reason. And then I got a little bit of this, uh, uh, this is a, a, a lighter green. I kind of milled out, and then of course I got the flaming hot red ones. You no, you could just open up like an elote food truck and just have you know like the rainbow, you know, every 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 day. This is like one of those like like your dish, you know. When I make it at the firehouse, they love it, and so. Um, I guess well, firemen are kids, right? Role the day. I'm sorry. Firemen are big kids. At the end of the day, you know, they like colorful things. They like sirens. They like to hear, you know, woo woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking you're just pulling on my heartstrings aj <laughs> no it's fiber you know that's the best part of the job we get to go through lights sirens air horns blow yeah. horns at people so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the, uh, some of the corn off the, the grill here and let it cool down for a second before i put it into la crema fresca and i'm gonna put my skirt steak on and nice. for my skirt steak um, I was lucky enough to source uh, some sour oranges. Now, this is uncommon. It's even hard to find down here. I had to go to a special market to find it. And uh, they were actually not that cheap either. They were like really? $2, uh, a dollar, was it 50 cents a piece? Wow. They come down to, they're relatively small. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So they're kind of ugly looking. This is like, 
this is going to sound like a stupid question, but what does it taste like other than a, a sour orange? You know, it, it is so sour and, and full of seeds. I'll cut one for you. Like yeah. lemon sour, or is it, you know, uh, it is astringent. It is huh? bitter. It is very bitter. Bitter, okay, okay. Yeah, it, it's to drink the juice straight would be almost difficult. And if you, this one is not too bad. Normally it's full of seeds. It's like three or four times the amount of seed you'll find. In is this is it something that you know is primarily used for marinades, or is there another use for them? Or it, it's used for marinades down here, yeah. and it's really it, it's uh, very strong. So okay. it's used like wild meats, uh, like I've used. Uh, uh, you know, down here we have hog boar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. It. Whenever I cook like wild boar, I get some of the guys that I work with hunt. They bring in deer. They bring in boar. The sour orange really it draws out some of that gamey flavor to it. Okay. Uh, and, and it works phenomenal. It's just a it, relatively short amount of time. It gives you a nice acidity to the food. It brings out a nice flavor profile. I've noticed that you also could buy it in a jar. You'll find this, in, I think, in most markets. Are you familiar with this? Okay. I've never seen it, but I, I also haven't looked for it. Cause, so it could yeah. be one of those things where it's there and – you know, it's, this is in most markets, even up, up by your part, you know, it just says, uh, it'll say in Spanish, naranja agria, which means sour orange. Yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, yeah. I, you know, during, I've done a bunch of like food competitions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I took a bunch of these different bottled ones and then I took just regular real sour oranges and I marinated a bunch of steaks with it and I put it out to the guys and I'm like, which one is, uh, you know, which one do you like the most? And it was just without, without question. The, the fresh sour orange, it's, right. just, it's just so pungent, has such a good flavor. But this is a good substitute as well. Sure. Like it's you said, good. if you can't get it or something. You can't get it. And if you use it, you got to just marinate it for like 24 hours or so to really right. kind of get it in there. A buddy uh, just literally the other day at work gave me, uh, he went on a big hunting trip. And I was like, I want a rack of ribs. You know, nobody ever gives anybody any venison ribs. And he came back. Slapped them on the table. So now I got a rack of venison ribs. So that's good to know that, you know, you, 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 you like that with game meat. Maybe if I could find it around here, maybe I'll give that a shot. If you come across them, I highly recommend it as a marinade. Uh, if not, the bottle always seems to yeah. substitute as well. I'm going to go ahead. And, what I did was I took the uh, sour orange and okay. I got about a cup of it of the juice. And I added a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, uh, uh, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of uh, pepper and I made a mojo. Uh, I, I don't know if you've heard that term before. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I've seen it in various applications, I guess. Is right, right, right. So down here, a mojo is just basically uh, a meat marinade is the, the Spanish term for it. Okay. And, uh, I put it on the skewer steak, got the inside flap. Nice. And I really put it right on my grill while we sear. You get a nice little sear. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be making tacos with the uh, churrasco, we call it. And I'm gonna be also be making a uh, fresh uh, chimichurri sauce. Now, are you doing uh, parsley chimichurri, cilantro? What's I, like, I'm part, I like flat leaf Italian parsley in my chimichurri. Okay. Uh, I may add a little bit of cilantro to it, uh, but I'm cautious because cilantro could be overpowering in flavor. Gotcha. But, I love chimichurri. Unfortunately, my wife hates parsley. <laughs> so I'm usually, uh, you know, making just enough for myself. And, you know, the guys at work, a lot of them don't like green stuff. <laughs> oh, no, you don't say. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. But uh, that, like you were saying earlier, you know, when we were talking, that's part of the, the firehouse cooking thing is kind of tailoring your menu to who likes what. Um, you know, who's maybe got an allergy or who's on a diet. And, you know, I, 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 I've talked to some chef, you know, firehouse chefs and they're like strictly like, nope, whatever I make is what I'm making. And that's the end of it. But to me, the reason like we like to cook is we like to make people happy. Right. So if I'm like, nope, I'm putting, you know, parsley in this dish, whether you like it or not, that guy's not going to be happy. And, and what good is it for me? You know? Yeah, well, my oldest son has celiac disease. Okay. 
And it's, uh, you know, complete, in, I know you know, but some people may not know, it's a complete intolerance to gluten, which is bread or anything that has uh, sauces. It's in a lot of products. And I've seen how people have, you know, have been so dismissive of this. Of right. It. You know, it's an autoimmune disease. He was born with it. Right, right, right. I'm very sensitive. And I always ask the guys, hey, man, is there anything, that you have any allergies? Is there anything you do eat or don't eat? And, uh, and they said, I don't have a problem. Uh, trying to cater to that. You know, fortunately, I have the, the capability of being able to create different dishes. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've, got, I've got a cousin who's got it, and, you know, every family function, it's, you know, there's the regular food, and then, you know, there's the gluten-free versions of basically whatever else we're eating, you know? Nice, nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build one of my, my street corn. It looks like it's ready. Good. So I cut, like I said earlier, I cut the corn off of my cob, um, and I don't know if you saw it, but I was scraping the back of my knife on the cob just to kind of get as much out of it as I can, and then I, I ended up making, um, I guess you could call it the dressing, so I took mayo, but then I, I blended up some, I like dry chilies, okay. so I had ancho, I had chipotle, and I had guajillo, I like guajillo for the color. Um, it's probably a little too spicy for my wife, but you know what? That's uh... <laughs> so I'm gonna dress mine up. I'm not gonna put too much, and then I know you you have cotilla. I like um, cotilla, but I also like queso fresco. Oh this yeah, nice because you could kind of leave it chunkier if you want. You know, you break it up just as much as you want. And it's not so strong. It's right. Yeah, it's a, it's milder, right? It's almost yeah. like. Um, it's almost like a like a hard ricotta, I guess. Yes. You know, a little. With the fresh cheese, you know. It's, it's, right. Exactly. It's not fermented or or aged or anything like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some of that in here, and then I'm gonna do some cilantro. Okay. So what do you got in there, AJ? You got you got the corn off the husk. Corn off the husk. I've got the dressing, which is mayo. Okay. Guajillo, ancho and chipotle chiles. Okay. A little bit of cumin, some salt, um, some lime juice. Man, it sounds delicious. I, I love uh, the, uh, the chipotle with adobo sauce. Yeah, like that smokiness, you know? Yeah, it's and good. I, it's got a lot of heat to it, but it's delicious. Right, and the, you know, you get that little can, right? You right. could get like three meals out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're like a lunatic, you know that. No way. You know, really like spice, um, but I usually end up. I'll usually use you know either the the liquid itself, or I'll I'll use the peppers themselves, and then I'll just save what I don't use, and then, you know, when it comes time, I'll use the rest of it. Love it. What else you got going in there? So right now, so that's it for right now. Actually, you know, what? I'm gonna put a little cilantro. So this is gonna be like the base. You know, I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of bowls. You know. Okay. Especially in the firehouse where, you know, it's like you could kind of make it where it's, it's, you could tailor it to, to your liking. So you make like a taco bar, but it's, it's, you know, all right, I like this topping. I'll put that. And, and you know, so I'm a big fan of the bowl situation. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to start buzzing up. I, uh, I charred up tomatillo, which I love because it's tart, you know, it adds like that brightness to it. I've got poblanos, which were like the last peppers from my garden. These are, you know, super late season. I charred the hell out of some garlic. I know that's like a cooking faux pas, right? Like everybody's like, don't burn the garlic. Right. But I honestly like some of the bitterness sometimes, you know, like okay. kind of balance out everything. I got some onion and I even charred up the lime. I'm just gonna buzz everything up, make a quick, quick salsa to put on top. Sounds amazing. That's not, I got the first steak going over here. I got a nice char marks going with it. Nice. And uh, I was gonna take some of my corn and start just running it through the little my little uh, production here. What I do is I just get it a nice even distribution of the crema fresca, and then I'll just come over here and I'm gonna sprinkle some of my takis on there, and I could do one. 
flavor, or on, like on this one, I, I'm gonna just do a variety of them, make it nice and colorful. And this is something you could kind of do ahead of time, right? You know, you're getting the rest of the meal ready, do this ahead of time, don't put it on the table because the guys are gonna eat it before it's time to eat, but Correct. Yeah, it's, at least it's done, right? That's it. And so you mentioned earlier, Food Network, cooking competition, like you, you know, you've done it all basically, right? Um, yeah, you know, I, I fell into it uh, by accident, I guess you could say. I had a mentor, a very good friend of mine. His name was John Wilson. He was a professionally trained chef. Is he and, a fireman as well, or is he he's a chef? Yeah, he's he a fireman. He, was, he, he went to culinary school. Nice. And then decided to uh, pursue the fire service. And uh, John was just probably one of the best chefs I've ever known. And we hit it off. I was very young at the time in the fire service, but we'd get in the kitchen and we'd tell stories about our sons. We both have three sons. And uh, we just talked BS about growing up. He grew up in New York, growing up in the Greek deli. And, you know, I, we just hit it off. And uh, right. unfortunately, uh, he was killed in an uh, off-duty accident. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. And, uh, yeah. And so one day, somebody, one of my friends called me and says, hey, uh, Steak of Meats is having this recipe competition. Uh, for firemen, and uh, the winner gets uh, you know ten thousand dollars towards a scholarship. We had just started a scholarship in his honor. Uh, oh and wow! I said, you know what? I don't really care to be in a recipe competition at the time. I just, you know, uh, but I said I'll do it for the scholarship and to honor John because I was very close yeah. to him. So I submitted a recipe for the Steakum uh, Firehouse Challenge. It was like the last day. I got a call, was selected to be one of the finalists. And from there, it just, you know, it, it just took off. And, and I, I got bit by the whole competition bug and, and it just pursued on to other things. Butterburgers Championship, uh, did the World Food Championships a couple of times. So you're competitive by nature, that's just, that's just you. I, I guess, you know, I think I like to be pushed. You know, I think all right. of them really made me like, it made me better. It wasn't necessarily a competition as much as like, man, how far can I take something? You know, how, how creative can I become? Right. And, and I think that that's really was the beauty of it. It really forced me to get out of my comfort zone. Um, and I did enjoy it. I got to travel, I got to see the world. I got to meet a lot of firemen. I was part of the uh, America's Best Firehouse Chili. Right, 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 right. I remember that. Yeah. Well, I submitted a recipe for that, by the way. Did you? Yeah. I didn't get anywhere with it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Can't yeah, win them all, right? Listen, I'm, chili's not my, I'm not gonna lie to you. Chili's not my forte. I just yeah, I make a bolognese sauce and right. then add yeast to it. You know, <laughs> whatever do it, it works, right? Obviously, yeah. I, I'm like chili to me is bolognese. You know, I'm like you know why I you know why I think I, I I didn't get picked on that one. I we had my wife and I we had just went to Barcelona. Okay, and we had this. Uh, this chickpea dish in in one of the markets and it was like chickpea blood sausage ton of parsley onion i do remember that recipe yeah and i'm like oh i'm gonna be inspired you know i'm gonna i'm gonna make this like you know super off the you know map kind of chili recipe well, right in my head yeah that sounded good it tasted great but it doesn't translate to firehouse chili you know so well that one that's, that's funny you say that you know a lot of these food competitions are, are so subjective you know and you never know what they're or any of these food competitions right uh, so and that, uh, you know what honestly huh? that's why fork and hose company what that has showed me and you know in turn showed everybody else is we don't we don't just cook chili and we don't just cook steak and potatoes like you know there's firehouse chefs putting out some amazing food that is totally against what the normal would be, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buzz up my salsa real quick so you might hear a little buzzing. Yep. Buzz it up. Can you get this here? So why you why you do that there, AJ? I just, I got my Mexican street corn and I have some, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to just finish uh, it with the uh, the hard Mexican cheese. Nice. Okay. This is the traditional uh, elotes. And I put a little bit of a little bit of parsley on top just to kind of decorate it. 
Okay. And so up front, I have some of the traditional ones, which is uh, the crema fresca, mayonnaise, the cojito cheese, and some parsley. Cotija. <laughs> you <heard> that? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have like on the bottom of the screen, like you know, like a, a, a countdown. Like how many how many times have you messed that one up? <laughs> uh, I know what I'm saying. That's see, that's the thing. You know what I mean? I understand myself. Right. That's all that matters, bro. That's all that matters. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what I'm saying. If somebody else can understand me, that, that's their problem. You know? Right. So, but you know, to everybody's defense that that's uh, you know Mexican. If somebody called something mana, you know, mana Cody or something like that, you'd probably get pissed off about that too, wouldn't you? Yeah, man. That's everybody. Everybody butchers Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, including yeah. Italian Americans for sure. Yeah, I think we, we we're the the worst offenders. Right. Exactly. You know, we we can't do any wrong, so you know. Jewel, you know. So. Uh, so you, you did the competitions, but then you also were on Food Network, right? I was. I went on uh, the first series of uh, Cooks vs. Cons, where it was uh, two amateur chefs, like myself. I'm not a chef. I'm just a cook. I don't call myself a chef. You're uh, a firehouse chef. I'm a firehouse chef. I'll take You're that. Firehouse chef. Uh, but I just consider myself a cook and uh, versus two professional chefs. And uh, the judges don't know who's the amateur and who's the pro. Uh, and I had a lot of fun with that. I made it down to between me and uh, Chef Brian from Nevada, who's a phenomenal friend of mine. Uh, Chef B, we're still good where, friends. He ended up winning it. Where did you film that? Was that in New York? Was that out in LA? We, we filmed that in Jersey at Jersey? Uh, Buddy Velastro's Bakery. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was real neat. I got to meet him. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, big production. I know you've been on Guys Grocery Games. I think that's out in California, right? Yeah, that's um, – I always forget the exact town. But it's kind of like Santa Mo – not Santa Monica, uh, Santa Rosa. Okay. So it's near Napa Valley or it might even be in Napa Valley. But, um, you know, you're only there for a couple days. So you get to drive by all the nice vineyards and, you know, see all those nice areas. But you have absolutely no time to, to – really enjoy any of that yeah you know that that's funny because uh guys if it came down to guys grocery games and the uh, cooks versus cons they were both kind of like trying to cast me at the same time right 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 and i just ended up going with the first one but they wanted to fly me in for a day and i'm like no i want to be you know if i want to if i'm going to new york city i want to stay there for two nights you know yeah at least a day would you you can't really i mean i can yeah. see where i went in santa rosa because you know you're you're 20, 30 minutes from everything, but New York, you know, New Jersey, that area, you can be anywhere in five, 10 minutes. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's you know, I, and I love New York. I love that whole area. You know, I was there not to love. Yeah. Right, right, right. Miami. Um, so I got my skirt steak. It's, it's done, a beautiful char to it. And I'm going to do a nice little chimichurri, which is a very, this is a very traditional uh, steak, cut a steak down here. And the chimichurri is a very common, uh, I guess, condiment that we add to it. And so I'm going to go ahead here. I have some chopped uh, flat leaf Italian parsley, a little bit of cilantro, not too much, some minced garlic. Okay. I have about a tablespoon of fresh lime juice. I have a tablespoon of uh, Italian herbs. Oh, I'm just going to mute myself. Go ahead. For the Good. I got a teaspoon of salt and a little teeny bit of pepper. And to this, I'm going to add my olive oil. So I got my acid in there, my salt, my pepper, my herbs, my garlic. And then I just add enough oil to cover the, the uh, flat leaf parsley. It's about a half cup. I'm going to take my spoon and mix it around. It makes almost like a a nice little green sauce to it. It's very herby. It's got the garlic to it, so it has a nice bite. And it has a, a, a nice bit of acidity in there between the lime and the white distilled vinegar. So it, it gives it like a fresh bite to, to bite anything. I use this over steak. I use this over, I mean, I could put this on a piece of bread and eat it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's one of my go-to things you could always make, put over anything. 
So since I'm going to put this into a taco, uh, I got my chimichurris done. We got to put that in there. And I'm going to bring out my little taco holder. See that? And then go into the, the food warmer. Give me some fresh. I was lucky enough to get some fresh tortillas this morning. I literally was standing there and the, the guy showed up with a cooler full of these really warm, delicious. I mean, they were they were like still steaming hot. Uh, I like to double them up. Just makes it a little bit stronger. They're small in size. You can go single if that's what you like. Just the way I like to do it. Okay. And we're gonna give this skirt steak a quick cut. Let me move this up. All right, now we have the skirt steak over here. And what I do is I cut it in half. I like to cut against the grain. I know you know that, so, but I'm just kind of saying it for, for everybody to see right here. I got a nice medium rare. I don't know if you can get that in the camera or not, but they got the juices are still flowing in. And then we're gonna go with it against the grain with the cut. And since it's a taco, I'm gonna do a nice long thin slithers of it. It's a strips, and you can just see it's beautiful. It's nice and pink. It's got good color to it. The sour oranges gives it just that, that real nice, it's a, it gives, it's, a, it's a tang that's really unique and delicious. And we're gonna put our strips in here. And this is just very simple. Basically, we're just taking the steak. We made a very simple chimichurri green sauce, a little more on this one, okay? And we're gonna to top it. You could add uh, different condiments you like. The queso fresco is very popular. Uh, always goes really well with this. Uh, but I like it just like this. It's basically you got the, the flavor of the steak, the chimichurri, and then you have the, the taco, and it gives it a real nice, nice little holder there for you. Okay? Boom. It looks so good, I want to take a bite of this. That's pretty good, AJ. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sorry, I gotta keep myself on mute. I got my, my hood on so I don't get the boys showing up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, no worries. I'm gonna wipe the cutting board real quick. Um, you know what the problem is? Because we don't have like a professional studio here, I gotta have this hood cranking if I'm cooking not underneath it, you know, I got one of those induction burners and above me is nothing but ceiling. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so, you know, if, if I don't have the hood on, forget it. Oh, what are you talking about? My apartment? Forget <laughs> about it. I got, a, the, my, I got three sons and we call it the ventilation drill. You know what I mean? They know that when I sear something, I go, hey guys, vent drill. So they know, open one sliding glass door and close yep. all the other doors. Yeah, one window of the bedroom. You know what I mean? And we're gonna vent this place. That's the one well, time that we guys like the some fire up, right? the truck. Huh? So when I was cooking my steak, I used the cast iron. I I, I love the cast iron, um, but I like to flip mine. You know, I know there's like that camp that's like you know straight up leave it, cook it one side, flip it, leave it. But I've noticed whether it's a skirt steak or a thick steak, like a, you know, inch and a half, two inch ribeye. Right. When you flip it more often, you get a better crust and you get more even cooking. You know, it's not. I agree with you. I think that's a misconception where you said that you can't move the steak. I moved the crap out of those steaks. I move them around right. the pan too to get the hot spots. Exactly. You know, and, and if it's not seared enough, I'll flip it back over. Right, right, right. You know, that's uh, but that's an old. I think that's there's so many myths, you know, with with what. There's no right or wrong. It's what works for you. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, and, how's and the pork I, doing there? Oh, so my pork is, is in the in the. What are we gonna? What are we gonna do? The tostones. Well, the pork is is doing its magic. We're gonna check on it. But meantime, through food TV magic, 
Wow, Shazam. <laughs> yeah, I, be, I may have done this before. <laughs> Look at that, that thing, man. So what we have over here is shredded pork. It comes out beautiful. I don't know if you could get a good shot on this, okay? But the pork is a shredded. And what I do is I take the pork out of the pressure cooker, and there's okay. a lot of liquid in there. I take the liquid, and I put it into a saucepan, and I reduce it to a third. So I condense all those flavors. And then once I shred the pork, I'll reintroduce it back into the uh, pressure cooker on a warm setting. And so all it, it kind of just infuses all that condensed flavor back into the shredded pork, uh, and it just keeps it moist and beautiful. And like you were saying earlier, that's, that's perfect for the firehouse, because if you got that on the warm setting, a run comes in, couple runs come in you could go out and you know when you come back especially with pork butt you're eating good like there's there's no you know it's not a piece of fish where you got to worry about it drying out or or a piece of steak that you know is going to end up like shoe leather you can't you can't screw it up but the power plate pod does everything it keeps it and it goes right to warm setting right, right. so it, it's it's just easy I, I swear i use it all the time especially now i'm getting lazier and lazier sometimes you get tired of cooking all this you know like, no, 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 you're working smarter not harder That's yeah there you go i mean i got uh was it seven to eight uh people i feed two meals a day it's almost like a side job right yeah yeah listen i went to uh you know maybe i shouldn't say it but there was a department a big city department that i went and visited a friend of mine who's on the job there and I walk into the firehouse and they're like, oh, this is the, the chef. And I'm like, oh, you like to cook? He's like, yeah, no, that's, that's what I do. So he literally comes into work. He collects the money from you guys, right? Okay. Gets in his personal vehicle, goes to the supermarket, shops, cooks all day. He's really? in the kitchen all day. It's like a catering hall. You know, they're an engine truck, rescue, uh, battalion chief, fire prevention. And if a run comes in, he doesn't even have to go, you know? Yeah, I, well, I think that's fair. I mean, you can't really, you know, it, it, that's, that's, that's crazy. It's like doing two dinner parties in, in 24 hours. And, you know, listen, I, I did ask, you know, if they took transfers. <laughs> <laughs> I always think, I would think that the cook should get step-up pay. You right. Know? Yeah. Because the cooking part doesn't get put on any kind of, like, employee evaluation form. There's no box, right. like, does this guy cook, yes or no? Right. How good is this cooking? Excellent, you know, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like everything else. What kind of employees? Is, you know, that should be like the employee evaluation. How good are his cooking skills, you know? And you know what? Going on top of that, I, I feel like the public perception is, is you know, it's one, one way or the other. They're either like super uh, supportive of it. Like, listen, you know, you guys are there for, depending on the ships you work, 24s, 14s, right. whatever. And then there's other people that, you know, I've had somebody question me in the parking lot of the supermarket, you know, what's the rig doing here? Why is it running? Why is it, yes. you know, and, and then, and then that's tough, but you know, you're right. The, the firehouse chef is, is probably one of the most important people in that firehouse, you know, not just from a, uh, you know, a, sustenance perspective you know not not just from the fact that you yeah you're feeding guys but you know you're you're providing uh you know a, some some level of comfort or you know absolutely more, agree with you it's more you know, than food itself. that's how we debrief that's our that's our psychologist couch right you know, that's when we, we sit around we have a bad call uh we sit around the dinner table you know, and we, we, we break each other's chops. We sit, we, and, you know, there's not a lot of jobs where you get to sit down and eat like family, you know, right. where everybody's eating from the same bowl. It's not, or the same plates, uh, you know, and it's, it's such a blessing to be able to share that with my coworkers. We right. can sit around and break bread together and discuss things. And if there's something on somebody's mind, uh, you know, guys get it out and we, we discuss all kinds of things. It could be good or bad, but we get it out. You know, we hash out our differences or we, most of the time it's just a lot of ball breaking and joking and laughing. Naturally. You know? it, it isn't a firehouse kitchen without any of that. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to plate my uh, pulled pork over here, the salsa verde. Uh, and I'm going to take just some of this. 
Now this is the Coston. Let me show you real quick. I don't think I gave you a good. Uh, yeah, let me see that. Further. It's it's nice. Oh, right up. Well, put that down. You got tweezers in this. You got tweezers, <laughs> buddy. I'm big time. Damn. <laughs> well, I didn't get that memo. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Oh man, what's next? Super I got two of them. <laughs> AJ, you got to get with the program, bud. Okay, I have a one that's curved, and I got one that's straight. Hey, hey, this is the, that's a different show. Uh, <laughs> with boogers, uh, I think that they, I think some other people call these McGill forceps. Right. <laughs> if anybody chokes in the firehouse, I could always just go down there and pull it right out. You know. So you go. Cool cool the EMS man. Uh, nice. Sorry, I cut you off because I was breaking. No, you're good, man. So I got the tostones. So it's just a green plantain. I mashed it. I gave it a little fry. Put a little bit of salt on top. It's nice. It's crunchy. It's uh, it's on the bland side, so it makes a nice neutral kind of plate. And then I'm gonna take some like a blank uh, plate pork. So put it right on top. Nice and shredded. It's really just juicy. It's loaded with flavor. Uh, it just, I wish, I wish that you could eat through the, uh, through the, the TV. Camera? Yeah, or at least smell a vision would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Oh, that that, that'll cool. happen one day. Maybe not when we're around, but. No, no, just man. just right. to go back on what you were talking about, because I think you mentioned it when you were cutting your steak to all the people that are watching. Super important with cutting against the grain, right? Like, this is a skirt steak. It's a little uh, mangled, I guess you could say, whoever butchered it. But if, if I'm cutting this, my knife is not big enough to get through this whole thing. So I'm just going to make it a little more manageable. And that grain is, is pretty easy to see once you start separating it. Super important, you know, make sure you cut against the grain. Go on the bias if you want to make it a little fancier. It'll just look nicer. Yeah, it makes it more tender. Yeah, it's not like shoe leather, you know? Yeah, correct. Uh, so I got a little bit of this crema fresca. I'll put in a little bottle. This is also fancy. I'm doing, I'm doing my fancy pants stuff. Uh -oh. if, this, if this was a firehouse right now, there'd be a lot of, a lot of ball busting going on. Yeah. Where's the food? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or we're hungry, we don't give a crap. Or, you know, or if, God forbid, somebody takes a phone out, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. The, last, the last guy we had on the show, we go the whole and – he, and he actually filmed it at the firehouse. So, you know, I gave him a lot of uh, credit for, for even thinking to do that. And then, you know, the whole cook is going great. And then here we go. We got to walk into the kitchen where everybody's sitting down at the table. They're waiting. And you could just hear it right away, the chirps, you know. And, and, and it was perfect. It was like on cue, you know, like he knew it was coming. You could just see in his face, like, here we go. Yeah. Not only am I, you know, usually, usually taking these fancy pictures, but now I'm recording a video, uh, you know, about the process. And, it was pretty you know, they, they, they give us such a hard time about it, but boy, do they love when we cook for them. Oh, yeah. exactly. And, but, and uh, so your firehouse, are you, you know, I, I know you said you cook a lot, but is it like designated? Like, all right, Alex is working, he's cooking. Like, so it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. You know, when I show up, I'm just, you know, I'm also the, the driver on the fire truck. Okay. Uh, you know, the guys in the medic unit, they get, to be fair, we got a, we got a great fire. I want to give a shout out to, uh, Truck 5, Medic 5, that's my crew back in Boca. And uh, our UMS captain, she's also at her station. She's phenomenal. We have just, we're like family. Those guys are great. But those guys in the medic unit, they get their butts kicked. And so we try to pull some of the weight on the, on the truck. I drive a, a ladder truck. Uh, and, you know, it's just part of, uh, you know, being the driver, it just seems like a, the designated guy for it, you know? Right, right, right. Besides, everybody else cooking sucks compared to mine. So, you, want, you want me to edit that part out or you want <laughs> no you can leave it right in they know it yeah so here we go i don't know if you get a good shot of this can you there we go so what i did was i got the tostone can you see that aj yeah man and i uh i, I put the pulled pork on top a little bit of the crema fresca and then i pickled some red onions 
And I put some very wilted looking cilantro on top as a sad looking garnish, but. <laughs> it's all good, man. But uh, at least you garnished good. it. At least you garnished it. I know in the firehouse, garnishing is, is kind of frowned upon in my, in where I am. No, I, I garnish stuff. You got, you listen, it, you, get, you eat with your eyes. Right, exactly. You know, and then to me, it's like first it's your eyes, then it's your nose. Yep. You, know, you, you, you see it, and then your nose picks up on the aroma. And the last thing is the palate. You know, that's really uh, the last sense that gets, uh, I mean, pleasure, you know. But nothing goes in like, the yeah. eyes. Sorry? something like cilantro, you know, yeah, th there's a flavor to it, but there's also an aroma. You know, it's not, you know, it's not strictly, uh, you know, a flavor thing. You, you know, it looks nice. Um, maybe not when it's wilted. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second there. Sorry, this this virgin uh, margarita caught up to me here. Yeah, quick tip started. though. Quick tip regarding wilted herbs. You know, while we're on that subject. Yep. First restaurant I ever worked at, it was mandatory that you refresh your herbs before service. So from you, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. So Thank it's everybody ready to say. Cilantro, um, you know, soft herbs, basil, chervil, dill, even, you know, those kind of things, not like rosemary or thyme. Just shock them in ice water for, you know, 10, 20 minutes, pull them out, dry them, and they, it's like they, you, it's like giving them CPR. Herb, herb CPR. See that? I, yeah, I love that. What in that term? <laughs> Hold on to that. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, it brings them back to life a little bit. But, That's you know, it's I just know from you. You put that on your podcast. Yeah, I never knew that, and I actually did that. I found, uh, you know, sometimes you go through the kitchen refrigerator, uh, you find, uh, you know, other yeah. people's stuff, and I'm like, you know, I could use a little bit of this, but it looks a little sad. And I said, right. I remember you talking about the ice bath. And I tried it, man. It brought it right back to life. Yeah, yeah. So it works. Thank you for that tip. You know, that, that's that's. I've learned a lot of things from, from you and your, and your, and your, you know, and fork and hose, man. You've really honestly have done a phenomenal job. I think over the years you've expanded your cuisine uh, and the video quality has gotten so much better that it's just, I follow you. I mean, I love what you do. I love your recipes. I steal a bunch of them. I'm going to let you know right now. And I take full credit, you know, That's uh, all right. I'm stealing. <laughs> flaming out the show. No, believe me. No, you know, I've never mentioned your name whenever the guys are like, that's delicious. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, I've been working on this recipe for a while. Yeah, how about this? From now on, what we'll do is I'll cook the meals. I'll ship them down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll be like those, like, prepackaged meal things that they do now. Really? I'll, 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 I'll ship you up uh, some sour oranges. I, actually, I'll uh, give a shout-out to uh, – we have, I think, a common buddy that follows us, uh, the chief uh, – I'm sorry, uh, Chef Island Medic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Out of Canada, a great guy. And he reached out to me after the chili competition, and okay. I sent him a box of sour oranges. Uh, oh, I see how it is. I see how it is. But uh, all this love, I don't get any oranges. What, what's this all about? You're going to get a you – know, now you're going to get some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show up to work. All right, we got sour oranges for a week. Uh, that's funny. No, listen, I – listen, honestly, Alex, I appreciate you coming on and doing this. Um, and Fork and O's company doesn't exist without guys like you, guys and girls. Uh, you yeah. know, it started off, you know, it was my way of sharing my own stuff. But real quick, I realized it's not about what I can do. It's sharing what everybody else can do. And you're a perfect example of what a firehouse chef can put out there. You know, it's, it's not just chili. It's not just steak and potatoes. So... What keeps it going for you, man? The passion. I mean, because I know that, like I said, you know, I started off as the firefighter foodie, and then I just kind of, after a while, I kind of, you know, didn't didn't have quite. It's a lot of work for you to put out those videos, and, and it's constantly appropriate. <laughs> it, it's crazy, you know. So, what what drives you, man, to do this? You know, uh, I I think it's 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 what I get out of it when I when I get to do stuff like this, you know, and you know, I I've met virtually met people you know firefighters from all over the country just because of what i've been doing and you know i i feel like between that and the stuff that i've learned along the way i kind of have to pay it forward you know and if i can inspire one person to get back into the kitchen or to get into the kitchen and start cooking for their crew or even their family 
home run. Like, you know, we'll, we'll Absolutely. Move around, so. Yeah, it's a big part of what you do. You said it earlier, you know. I mean, it, when, when you have a, the, the guy that cooks, it brings us all brings us together. And when you have a good chef in the firehouse, it just makes, it makes the day go better. It, right. it really does. It makes for a better 24 hours. And I always feel like if I could do anything to make this next 24 hours better for my crew, I'm going to do it. Because sometimes, right. you know, it's a sacrifice. Uh, having to go shop and then, you know, get collect money yeah, for everybody, cook in, right. and then you're running calls, you're training, and then they, you know, everything has to drop every time the tones go off and half the time you got, you're working on a dish and you're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> you can say it. You can say it. Don't worry. Gosh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Darn it. Yeah. Uh, Gosh, the darn tones it. go off, you know? Right. And, uh, and, you know, and you got to turn everything off and go. And I think that's what, you know, that's, that's why I always say, you know, I, I refer to guys like us as firehouse chefs because we're doing things that, you know, a chef in a restaurant would do, but on a whole nother level, you know, chefs in restaurants, nobody's walking in and saying, all right, everybody shut the ovens off. No nope. back in 20 minutes. No, this is a whole different ball game, you know, granted, you know, we're not doing, you know, 200 covers a night, but it's... Sorry. You know, you're, you're still dealing with what I like to call the, the most critical individuals you've ever met. You know, I think firefighters are just, they're going to let you know if something sucks. Oh, yeah. You'll never make it again or, oh, you know, yeah. you'll never hear the end of it. Oh, and they, and they love to break my, they break my balls every day. Every crew, every every meal to them, there's always some kind of criticism. You know, yeah. they enjoy it. They, they, they love it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but then at the end, they're always like, hey, man, thank you. You know, we right. appreciate it. But it, it wouldn't be a firehouse if they didn't break balls, you know. Just that simple, like, hey, man, thanks for cooking. That's, that's it. Yeah. I'm like, I love that. You could say it sucks, but if you thank me for making a shitty meal, I'm all right. I'm good with it. <laughs> you know, and it's funny. I'm like the house mom. You know, I, I, as I'm sitting in the kitchen cooking, I can't tell you how many people gather around the kitchen, and they either watch or we start to talk. You know, or, or guys will come in and they'll start to private. You know, it, it seems like we all just it becomes a gathering place when I'm cooking. You know, and but, but do you get the hovering? Do you get like the you know the guys that uh you know <laughs> there you go you start yeah. grabbing things. Yeah. Always. Hands always. Right. Uh, and there's always like that one guy who has a hundred questions, but you've never seen the, you know, make toast. Yeah, yeah. How you <laughs> like, you're like, bro, you know, I, I can write a cookbook with all the information I'm giving you. You know, you can apply <laughs> you it and stuff or like what? You know, still can't figure out how to boil water. Right. But they're good for for cleaning the dishes at least. Oh, no, that, without question. I, I I'll tell you, I haven't cleaned a toilet in a firehouse, and I don't, I can't remember. Oh wow, you got it like that, huh? You cook, you don't clean nothing. I mean, that, listen, I'm cooking. I'm not clean. I'm not doing, I'm not cleaning the station. I'm not doing toilets. I'm not doing all that stuff. You guys do it. It's your job. So, so when I go back to work, I'm going to be like, hey, guys, listen, Alex told me. That Absolutely. I have to do anything except cook. <laughs> I, I'm going to make this real, it's real easy. AJ. You say, no problem. I either clean a toilet or I cook. You know what I mean? What do you want me to do? That's the toy. Those you, you got A and you got B. You know, what right. do you want? I'll do the toilet. Do you think it's a good approach to like bring the food that you were gonna cook? Be like, hey, you see this giant ribeye I was gonna cook? <laughs> you know, kind of entice them that way. I don't think you're gonna get off very easy, AJ. I think you, you, those guys should be so appreciative to have you there, man. You know, I'm surprised. You know, all of us that, that, that like to cook. I'm plating mine up, man. I'm getting hungry over here. Yeah. Uh, Are we digging in? What are we doing? Yeah, let's do it. Um, real quick, don't dig into everything. Save some because we like to do like a post-production, you know, picture. So uh, okay. save some stuff. But uh, you want to do pictures now? Yeah, let's do it now then. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So I got my bowl. Like I said, I'm doing a street corn bowl. Okay. And I'm just gonna lay some skirt steak on top. I'm not gonna put too much because I I honestly ate dinner already. But. Uh, I'm going to do skirt steak. I've got the queso fresco. Like I said, you get to crumble it kind of to your liking. And I like to keep it a little inconsistent just because I like that, you know, bite of a bigger piece of cheese and then maybe have, you know, if you listen, you could hear the boys in the background. Oh, yeah. um, 
I'm going to put the crumble on top. This is that chorizo tostone cr uh, crumble. Okay. Basically for texture. Um, I'm going to put a dollop of that salsa on top. I love tomatillos. Like that's when it comes to, to tacos or, or Latin food in general. Right. I love the addition of that just because I think it like cuts through any richness, you know, like the, the, the tartness of it. Got some avocado, which honestly I wasn't going to throw in there, but I had them. So why not? You, I, you know what? That was actually going to make an avocado tomatillo salsa, uh, which I had the tomatillos here, but the avocados were like baseballs. I uh, think I want to save my life. I want to do two things. So, I, okay, we scratched that, you know? Yeah. So, I have them on display over here, but that was the, ori the original idea was to make a little salsa with a tomatillo and, a, and avocado and a little bit of cilantro. There's yeah. not too many things worse than thinking an avocado is ripe. And as soon as you bury the knife into it, you go, nah, not ready. It's like, it's like watery almost, you know? Yeah. And then I'm going to top it off with a seasoning, which I'm sure you're familiar with, tagine. Yes. This stuff is, it's like crack, you know, like it goes well on everything. Um, I know the main ingredient is like chili pepper. Uh, sea salt, citric acid, and dehydrated lime juice. So it's like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's like tart, right? I and love I, it. It's very, yeah, it's, it's very tart. It's different than other spices. Yeah. And I remember when I, I think the first time I had it, I was in LA and there was a cart. The lady was selling uh, mango, pineapple mango pineapple a couple other fruits she put it in a bag and then she sprinkled this on it yep. it like blew my mind and i'm like what is that i discovered it same way yeah the, so, i saw a lady putting uh sprinkling on fruit on a card yeah and i'm like what is she doing and uh i've never seen it i'd never heard of it before and then uh now i always keep a little bit in the in the pantry and it's great on like popcorn phenomenal okay. what's your favorite hot sauce i may ask Oh, man. Um, I'm like a depends on the situation kind of guy. But if I if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Valentina. Oh! oh <laughs> favorite. It, yes. It, Absolutely. Cholula is close, close, but Valentina, I think, is – there's, I don't know what they do to get the consistency that they get. It is so good. And the, the last place I worked at, which was actually a wood-fired Italian pizzeria. So we cooked everything wood-fired and that kind of thing. But our wings, we used Valentina. And we, we instead of, you know, your traditional Frank's Red Hot and Butter, we did Valentina and Butter. And, like, blows away Frank's. It, it, oh, it's not even the same. I agree 100%. That's funny. That is my absolute favorite hot sauce. And, and everybody, uh, you know. I think it, it has more, it. Yeah, I think it's got more flavor. There's more going on, you know, than. than uh, it's got a nice like, texture, too. Yeah, it, it's like that consistency. I don't know. Correct, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a picture of mine. I think I got to screw this up real quick. Okay. Want to take a picture of yours? No, I'm not. Okay. Why you, you talk, that's my camera. Yeah. Oh, better? Okay. You want me to take a picture? Yeah, you play better than me. See if I can get that down. There we go. I got like... Here's my, here's my producer. Producer Eli Eliza? Eliza. Eliza. Thank you for helping Alex. You know, he needs all the help he could get. Yeah. Oh, you have no, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm a hot mess, and she's super organized. So it's, you know, it's like it's good. I, I got to yell at him all afternoon. It was perfect. Perfect. It was perfect. I'm glad you like, helped that situation. I was like, focus. Focus. I have like ADD. I'm distracted. You know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking at Instagram. She's like, what? Dude, I just want to say. 
thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. Um, I know, you know, down in Boca, it's a very fast paced lifestyle and you're probably super busy with, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, geriatric calls and whatnot. Um, but no, seriously, like I want to say thank you. And, um, you know, the past, I don't know how many years it's been two, two, maybe even three years that you've been helping, you know, contribute to Fork and Hose Company. Like I said, you guys, or the reason that it exists and um i just want to say thank you and please thank let you. the the people out there know where they could find alex's food on uh your social on instagram just so that they could follow along because they definitely will be hungry when they absolutely go. well it's right now I, it's just my name alex caligari uh with the underscore and i think the best way to find it is to go to fork and hose and uh we'll post uh we'll post a picture uh, because my last name is uh, a little difficult to to, to spell for, out for the non-Italians out there. Sure, yeah, yeah, it's Caligari. And I'm sure we could get that down, you know. But it's uh, it's actually A L E X Alex C A L L E G A R I underscore. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you. Like I said, thank you so much. Uh, cool. Thank you to National Fire Radio um, for, for letting me bring on my friends and, and cook. I wish we could do this in person with everybody, but, uh, just the fact that we could do this, you know, New York to Florida is pretty, pretty incredible. And I look forward to doing it again, maybe in person one day. You know? I, I, I'm all for it, man. I, I think it's going to happen. I'd really, uh, I love the opportunity. You, you know, if there's anything I could do, I'd fly up there in two seconds, man. I got a ton of miles. And uh, <laughs> we're just gonna get through this like pandemic huh? thing, maybe, and <laughs> we'll make we're it happen. Come down with the family to South Florida. Perfect. You know, we could do something down here, man. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Man. All right, guys. That's it for us today. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, as always, stay safe, eat well.